Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create a digital clock like what we see here. Now, let's go over a few things about how we're going to do this. We'll be using JavaScript, CSS, and of course, HTML. Family is going to be Helvetica, N-E-U-E. -E. We're going to give a text align of center, and we're going to give a font size of 10 px all right so so far we have this basically background that's set for, on our html all right so let's go ahead and do our bodies specify some body styles we're going to set the margin at zero and we'll set our font size for the body at 2 rem we're going to use a display flex We'll set our flex to one, our min height to 100 VH, our align items to center. That kind of changed the background a little bit. Now we have our digital image. Uh, by the way, you can find any image that you want for your background for your clock. Um, I chose at first a neon uh, background, and then uh, I realized I have an iStock photo account, so I wanted to use it so I don't get pinged since this will be on YouTube. All right, let's go ahead and set up some basic styles for our clock face. So we'll say clock, going to give this a width of 30 rem and a height of 30. And we'll give this a border of 20 pixels. We're going to make it solid and white. Now, if we refresh this, this is not going to look much like a clock, but we just have this square on the page overlapping. So as you remember, the way we get round things is we use a border radius. And we'll specify border radius of 50%. So we'll do that. Refresh it, and now we have a circle. We're getting closer to our clock face. Let's go ahead and set the margin for this to force it on the page to the middle. So we're going to say margin 50 pixels plus auto. And this should move it somewhere around the middle of the page. There we go. Okay. Next, we're going to set a padding on this. And our padding is going to be 2 rim. And then we're going to set a box shadow. Now, our box shadow is basically going to allow a little bit of um, a shadow on the inside of the circle and the outside. So we're going to start by saying 0, 0, 0, 4 px RGBA. Remember, the A is for the alpha. And we're going to say 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma. 0.1. So you can barely see it. There's a little bit of a shadow there on the clock face. It helps it to stand out a little bit. All right, so let's go to the next part. We have the outer part of the clock, but what we also need to do now is address the inner part, the clock face itself. The clock face itself is going to... Um, help with the positioning of the clock hands. So let's go ahead and come down here, say clock face, and we'll give it a position of relative, give it a width of 100%, uh, a height of 100%, and we're gonna use the transform. We're gonna say transform, and we'll use a translate on the y-axis. And we're going to specify a negative three pixels. And what this will do, this will account for the height of the clock hands, which we're going to add later. All right. We refresh it. Not really a lot is visible at this point. 
this is just some background stuff that we have to do. All right, next, let's go ahead and specify our hands. So if you remember, we have a hand class here. And this hand class is going to address both our minute and second hands globally. Okay, so we'll start off with saying our width, and we're going to use um, 50%. We're going to give it a height, and the height here is going to be six pixels. This is the, the height of the, the hands. Okay, and then the background, we're going to use uh, just the plain background, but we're going to specify an RGB on this. And I want to use something that kind of matches the same tonality colors of our, um, of our cityscape. So I chose this color and you can see here, this is, um, it falls into that, that color range, which is pretty close to what we have over here. Okay. So the next thing we're going to add to our hand, um, is we need to add the position and the position for this is going to be absolute and we're going to give it a top of 50 percent uh, let me stop for a moment the hand itself if we look back up here the hand class itself exists inside the clock face class right it's nested inside this div so when we say for the clock face, we have to, we specify a clock face of position relative. And what that allows us to do then is to specify anything inside a child of this. If it's absolute, it will be centered off of the location of this relatively positioned clock face. And as you can see, this is the clock face. So it's relatively positioned. So we're saying that from the top of this clock base, 50% down, we're going to set the hand. Okay, and we're going to specify a transform origin, and we'll do 100% and transform rotate 90 degrees, and a transition, I'm going to give this 0, 0.5 seconds, okay? So we're specifying the rotational direction of this object and we're saying that when when our hand appears on the screen from movement to movement it's going to rotate at a specified axis and we're going to see a transition point of five seconds okay so if i refresh it right now we have this blue line right just this blue hand so let's go ahead and continue going here i'm going to add transition timing function and this is that cubics uh cubic bezier function and what this does it allows you to specify kind of like a a a rhythm to it it's supposed to you can see my head it kind of it drops and goes and drops and goes and so in in terms of this line that we see here on the page when it changes it's going to give it like a natural tick kind of a bounce is what we're after all right I, I don't know if i'm explaining that well enough but there's a bit of a bounce there that we're after all right 2.7 and 0 0.58 and one okay and then the last thing we want to do is apply a box shadow to this as well because i i think it would stand out better against that that background so I'm going to use a 3px, 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 and specify an RGB for this. This is kind of a, just a bit of a gray background. And um, I am using a, I need to say an opacity here. So let's put the alpha on that. We'll save it. And let's go ahead and refresh. So now we have a little bit of this, um, this background that stands out. Okay. All right. Last thing we need to do is, well, we got a couple of more things we need to do. But first of all, let's go ahead and add our button. 
And, you know, our button is that little button in the center of the, uh, the center of the, of the clock, right? I'm adding a button because it helps to hide the way the shadows overlap each other for each hand. It creates this kind of weird, I don't like it. So the button helps to hide it a little bit. All right. So we'll do with, uh, 10% and height of 10% and we're going to do a position absolute. I'm going to specify for this. I had to play around with it to get it right. So we're going to use uh, 46% and we're going to use a left of 46% as well. Uh, we're going to add a border radius to this. Remember our border radius is 50% and and we need to add a background color. Okay. And I'm going to set the background color to my button to be white. And as well, I'm going to add a box shadow. So I'm just going to copy this same color sequence up there. Paste it here. We'll save it and refresh. And there we have our box shadow. It's still not, you know, it's still not 100% center, but it's going to work. Okay. What else do we need to add here? Well, we need to talk about the hour hand, second hand, and um, and then go to our JavaScript. So let's go ahead and specify the class for the hour hand. And we're going to give this a width. Again, this is going to be 30% and right of 50%. Uh, let's go to our second hand. And our second hand, we're going to give it a background. And we're going to specify RGB 162 for the red, 0 for the green, and 255 for the blue. That gives us kind of a purple, right? So you can see the purple longhand showed up. And that's going to set well with the rest of what we have going on here. What's next is we need to look at our JavaScript. Now, for the JavaScript, um, we're going to specify some variables. And in JavaScript, you can specify variables either by doing a var or a const. Now, vars are changeable. You can set them in memory and then go back and reset them and write over them and so forth. Um, constants, it's a type of variable that you can't. And we really want certain elements on our page to be not to be non-changeable and these would be our hour minute and second because that's what we're going to be addressing so let's go ahead and create a constant for our second hand and now we need some way of referencing that class and if we look at our index.html we have we have second hand right here so I'm going to copy that, go back to my JavaScript. And uh, the JavaScript document object model gives us a way of actually controlling and manipulating elements on your HTML page. Okay, so we're going to say document. This is the root. And we're going to give a query selector. And our query selector is just going to find our second hand. All right, there is many ways we could do this. We could use document get element by the tag name, by the ID, and I believe, yeah, document.element by class name. So we're going to use a shortcut method of query selector. And what the query selector does is it, it looks at all of the elements on this page and it says, hey, in here, do we have anything that has this? syntax and the syntax is what i specify here query hand okay all right so we're going to end that with semicolon and you have to end all of your um all of your code with semicolons when you're done with a line in javascript so as you can see here we've now created a variable for the second hand that references this HTML object. Let's create another one. We're going to create another one. We're going to call it constant minute hand. 
And if we look at it, we're going to do the same thing. Document, query selector, and as you can guess, I'm going to do quotes dot minute hand because that should be the class. Let's look at it. Oh, it's min hand. Okay. We have to make sure we match this because if it doesn't match, it's it'll be bad. We won't reference it. All right. So we're referencing the minute hand with the class min hand. And then the final constant we're going to create, this is a constant for the hour hand. This is going to be document. Again, query selector. And we're going to use our hand. All right. So if at this point we refresh the page and looked at um, what's happening in, um, in the console, squishes up really nice, doesn't it? Go to the console and I'm going to refresh this again. Okay. And if I just say, type in the console second hand and hit enter, it tells me inside the console that this is a div hand second hand, right? If I do cons second hand dot, uh, enter HTML and hit enter, it tells me what's in it. And right now there's nothing in it. Okay. Um, so we can kind of look at things in our console this way. The other thing that's nice here is in your debugger, you can open up and actually select the file and put breakpoints. So now I have a breakpoint on each of these. And if I refresh, what happens is the code execution of launching the page is paused because you could tell not everything has appeared here, right? Um, we're pausing things. And so I'm going to use this to step to the next function call or this one to go to the next breakpoint. Okay. Uh, either one of these are good. If you don't have a breakpoint on every line, you use the step to the next function. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And you can see that it's giving us detailed information about our second hand. And this is really how you, uh, you break through all of your, your code. All right, so we're going to undo those. We're going to close that little window, come back over here, and we need to create now some type of function that is going to gather the time and print it. And the way you create functions in JavaScript is you say function and then the function name. Now, our function we want to create needs to, in essence, set the clock face, right? We want it to set the clock face. So I'm going to call it set clock face. So I have the function name and I have a parenthesis for the method and I have two curly brackets. All right. So we have a function so far. Let's go ahead and get the current time. Now in JavaScript, the way we do this is JavaScript has some internal objects that we could already use, some internal classes. And one of them is called the date class. So this is something that I want to get a, a handle on and I want to uh, store it. So I'm going to use const again. I'm going to say now equals new date. And the idea behind this is every time the set clock face is called, this method is going to call the new date and it's going to set it to the constant now. So I mentioned earlier that you can't overwrite variables. And this kind of gets to an interesting topic for us. First of all, the, um, the scope of this variable here that we see now is only valid inside the method. So the now constant variable is not global, it's local to the method. If it was global, it would be one of these methods, 
one of these, um, excuse me, not methods, one of these variables. These are global variables, but this constant is not. And so it's created brand new every time. As the same as these variables are created brand new every time when you refresh the page. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and access the object now, which is of type date. So I'm going to say constant seconds equals now dot get seconds. So the date class has a method called get seconds. I have my seconds, but I also now want to determine what the degrees are on the clock so that my rotation can be applied to the second hand. And the way we're going to do that is first we're going to create another constant. We're going to say seconds degrees. We're going to do a little math here. So first of all, let's, um, let's take our seconds and we're going to divide those by 60. Okay. So I have my seconds. We're going to divide them by 60. And then I need to wrap this method, wrap this uh, parentheses here in uh, another set of parentheses. And I want to do some order of operation. Um, so let's go ahead and do our next order of operation. And that is we want to multiply the number of seconds that we divided by 360. Okay, we're dealing with the amount on the page. And then what we want to do on top of that is we want to add a 90 because that deals with the degrees now i have when this thing is called it is going to set the the location of my second hand so i'm going to reference my second hand object the global variable which is up here and i'm going to say style it style and then transform it and we're going to say it equals to now the rotate and we're passing in a bit of um, special code here that we wouldn't typically get into um, this early on let's see we can't use that we have to use the tick marks let's use the tick marks here there's a number of things that we're kind of getting into at this point in our class that we um, we wouldn't get into normally at this point with JavaScript. So just trust me here. The We're going to use the special syntax of dollar sign degrees. And because we're inside this special uh, syntax of tick marks, we're going to specify the seconds degrees variable. We're going to say, hey, put this variable in here and append it a little bit further here. And let's Go ahead and deal with our minutes now. So we're going to say const minutes equals now get minutes. And then we're going to say const minutes degrees. And we're going to do a lot of similar math. So I'm just going to copy this uh, formula up here. I'm going to change out the seconds with minutes. And then we're going to do a similar, we're going to say minute hand equals, oops, I'm sorry, not equals, minute hand style dot transform. And we're going to use the tick marks again. Put our semicolon at the end. And basically we're going to use the same type of code, but we're going to swap it out for the uh, sec for the minutes degrees instead of seconds degrees. So let's copy this, put that in, and save it. Okay. And now we got to go down and we got to do the same thing for hours. So I'm just going to copy this real quick because I feel like I'm typing the same things over and over again. I'm going to change this to hours, get hours, hours degrees change that to hours minutes degrees change it to minutes and change this to the hour hand okay and then the last thing we want to do 
is we have a special built-in JavaScript function, and this is called the set interval. And what set interval does is it runs a function at a particular sequence. And the syntax for it is very straightforward. We just say set interval. We do set date, uh, excuse me, set clock face. And when we're calling a set interval method and we use the, um, when we call a set interval method, we call a function that exists. We don't specify the parenthesis when we're calling it inside of the set interval. We just use the uh, without the parentheses. And now, we, all right, okay. So now we go ahead and use the time sequence. And this is in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds is one second. 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So I'm going to do a little note here for us. 1,000 milliseconds is one second. Okay. We're going to save it and then we're going to refresh. Now what's going to happen is when we refresh set interval is going to be called. Okay. And set interval is going to call, um, set clock face every thousand milliseconds. All right. So let's just refresh it. And there we go. We actually have our clock going. And as you can see, every thousand milliseconds, it's ticking away. That's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. All right, let's take this a step further now. Um, although we could spend a lot of time putting um, numbers along the edges and transforming them and, and so forth, let's look at another thing that we can do with specifying how um, like a digital time face could be shown, right? Let's go back to our index, index HTML. We have our clock and we have our clock face and let's go ahead and outside of our clock div, let's create another div. And this div, we're going to call it class digital clock. You know, like the clocks you used to use, the, the Rotodex clocks, something like that, right? All right, so we're going to create inside of it another div. And I'm going to give this one a class and call it time. And just for visualization, I'm going to do 12, 23, um, 12. We'll save it and then refresh. All right, so now we have this div over here on this side of the page. Okay. All right. Let's think about how we can style that up real quick. Let's, let's see, what can we do to style that up? Let's go down to the bottom here and, um, let's set our digital clock. Let's give it a, um, font size of 12 rem and let's set a color on this of white and because we're using flex and the way things are laid out i'm going to go ahead and specify a width for this and this should protect it a little bit from jumping on the screen and we'll say 400 px all right so there is our clock, right? Uh, there's still a little bit of work to be done on it. Let's, let's do a few more things here. Let's access the time class inside of the clock, digital clock. So I'll say time. And for this, I'm going to give a padding on the right of 20 PX. Okay. And then we'll do a text shadow because I want it to pop a little bit. 2px, 2px, 4px. And let's use an all black. I think we could just do that. 
Let's see. Yeah, that makes it stand out a little bit. All right, wouldn't it be cool though if we could go ahead and use like a, an actual digital font, right? Wouldn't that be cool? All right, so let's let's go back here to our terminal real quick. And let's see. All right, in our terminal, let's clear this out. I'm going to do an ls-la. We can see some of the files that we have in there. Let's do it just to pull this again and do just an ls. Um, I downloaded a digital font earlier, so let's see. We're going to do copy from my downloads, and this is digital 7. And I think we want the digital 7 TTF. Copy that over here. Let's check. All right, so there is what we have so far. Again, if we missed anything earlier, we're in the GitHub directory. Um, and our directory is called Digital Clock Face. All right. So let's go back and take a look at um, what we have here. Let's go up to the top and specify for ourselves a font face, a web font, right? So we'll say font face, and I'm going to give it the name digital font. And the URL for that is, because it's local, right, is that digital 7ttf and then what we want to do is come down to the um i think it's our digital clock yeah let's do it here we're going to give a font family and we're going to specify our font family digital font we're going to save it and then refresh and look at that we have this really cool clock now that's actually setting right here on our page the clock isn't doing anything though right um as you can tell nothing magical is happening with with it so far so what we have to do to change that is go back into our javascript file and we're going to add a little bit of code that references um it references the the time so i'm in my set clock face method i'm going to create a variable and this is var time equals hours plus colon plus minutes plus colon plus seconds and because i've already set these these constants up here i can apply them to this var time with no problem at all all right now i want to access my my time div my time div is what's right here so the way i'll do that is i'll say i'm going to create another const and I'll call this my digital clock face. And this is going to equal document query selector. Oops, query selector parentheses time. And now I want to set my time. Okay, not have this static time because this is this is not correct, right? So the way I set my time is I access this constant I just created digital clock face, which references over here this div, right? I'm accessing this div. Okay. So I'm gonna say this digital clock face, I'm gonna give it an inner HTML command. And what inner HTML does is I is it allows me to set the inside of that div, okay? Inner HTML will access only this section right here, and it allows me to pipe it 
with information, okay? Input into it information. So the information I'm gonna give it is my time, which I just created up here, all right? So I'm gonna save it, come back over and refresh. And now my time is reflecting what's actually going on. All right, some crazy things are going on here right now. Um, number one, I only have zero minutes, right? We're not used to that. We're used to saying double zeros. Well, that's because when this returns on the minutes, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't return double zeros. It returns just a zero, right? And the same thing is going to happen up here when it cycles up to 60. As soon as it hits 60, it's going to be just one, and this will be zero one. Okay, watch what happens. Yeah. So there's a little bit of logic that we can put in here as well. Let's create a function and we're going to call it pad two. And what we want it to do is take whatever value we have, which is some number, and we want it to pad it in with two characters. So I'm going to give you a little bit of complex code here. I'm just going to say return. And I'm going to specify a type of um, urinary uh, operator. Uh, it's basically an if-then check, right? If-then, then do this type operation. So we're going to say if the number is less than 10, right? Because anytime our time over here is less than than um than 10 right if this is less than 10 it's going to be one digit so what we want to do is if it is less than 10 we want to append a zero otherwise we do nothing right so we're going to return that and we're going to add it to the number okay now or if we didn't have this in single quotes right here and we added zero to the number, you all know what happens with numbers when you add zero to a number. It, well, it means nothing. But because we put this in single quotes, it, tra it changes this number actually into a textual number. Okay. And it's the same thing that we did up here, in fact. If I did hours plus minutes plus seconds without this semicolon, um, without this colon in quotes, you would actually do some type of math and you wouldn't get the printout of these, of these uh, numbers. All right. So how do we do that? Let's first start up here with hours. We're going to wrap it with pad two. And we're going to say the same thing for minutes pad. Oops. Two. And finally, we're going to do it for seconds. Add two. All right, let's save it and test it and see what we got. We should see something interesting here. And there we go. We actually got our, our uh, text of our time to show up with the appropriate padding. All right, guys, that's all we have for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, if you have any questions, send it in the comments. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep up with all the videos that I'm posting. Cheers.